Grand Prairie Regional College presents a slice of the future right here, right now. Straight out of a science fiction movie, 3D printing has been around since the 80s. But today, this technology has become more common. So what is it? How does it work? And what is it used for? Here to help us with this is Lloyd Shirk from the Center of Research and Innovation. Lloyd is responsible for the college's 3D printer. Tell me Lloyd, what exactly is 3D printing? Simply put, it's building up a model in layers. So they're just adding layers to a model of using different materials. And with the new 3D printers, there's a great range you can print with, whether it's uh, right from glass to metal, plastics of all sorts. They're planning right now to actually build moon shelters using moon dust with a 3D printer. At the college, we have a Stratasys Dimension printer. It's uh, called a fused deposition modeling printer. In layman's terms, it's basically a glorified glue gun or a high-tech glue gun laying plastic in one one-hundredth of an inch layers. So tell me, Lloyd, in general, what is 3D printing used for? Real, real life application is for engineers and for inventors. It allows us to print out prototype parts or models of parts so that a person could see either how they fit together or how they could be used or you could use them for testing. Uh, the same idea could be used by an architect to build models of buildings or models of towns and villages or, or layouts. So it's a real practical tool for the engineering world. Well, yeah, 3D printing there is going to revolutionize the way we manufacture uh, products because it allows us to build pieces in many different uh, materials and a different size we can scale them up and down. It's really going to change the way uh, pieces or parts are manufactured because you can actually have a manufacturer or part built on demand and eventually we will be able to build them in our own homes. Now let's see the college's 3D printer in action. Here to help us with this is Ken Hausko. Ken is an instructor at the college as well as an artist in his own right. Ken uses miniature trees, houses, barns and lighthouses as icons in his mixed media constructions. We are going to use one of his miniature objects to showcase the 3D printer. Ken, could you briefly describe your art? Uh, I'm neither a painter nor a sculptor. I would call myself a mixed media artist, meaning I use a wide variety of materials in both two-dimensional formats. So tell me, Ken, what do you find fascinating about 3D printing? As I, um, I mentioned, I work in mixed media and I often respond to materials rather than from the idea. So it's, it's like a large toy box. And I think a lot of artists work this way. So if you could actually produce it and with additive manufacturing, a number of different components and objects, so you could actually collage and have them play off of one another. This is uh, maybe an hour's worth of work. There's a little bit of carving, there's modeling with materials here. So it's this complex form. I'm really intrigued about how it can be printed for me. And since I'm interested in multiples, what I would do with 10 of these would be very different than what I would do with one. <laughs> I could cut my production time down dramatically. <laughs> and artists respond to materials as well as ideas. It's like two come together in unison and we have flashes of inspiration. 3D printer is a flash of inspiration. So first we're going to use our smartphone to scan the 3D image. All right, next, we're going to send that information to the 3D printer. This is a file of the model. We can change the orientation so we can make it easier to print. And we can also change the scale. And then once, it, once we clean it up and where we're the point that we're ready to print it, then we run it through another utility. And we can, you can see here it's going to take two hours and 39 minutes. And it gives you the amount of material we're going to uh, use. Let's sit back and watch the 3D printer work. This process will take approximately three hours. And for the last step, we have to wash out the support material.
And voila, we have a scaled down size of the miniature. Now if Ken wanted to use size variations or multiples, it's as simple as a mouse click away. How else might this technology be used? Well imagine you're on a rig site and a part just broke off the pump. You scan that part on your smartphone, email it to the 3D printer technician, and by the time you get back into town, that part has already been manufactured, ready to take back on site. Or how about you have a new innovative tool that you want to show to customers, but it weighs 60 pounds and is three feet wide. Wouldn't it be great if you could show them a scaled down model that you printed off GPRC's 3D printer? Or better yet, have a few printed and give them away. So this technology is only limited by our imagination. It's being used from everything to children's toys to organ transplants. The only question left is, what are you going to use it for?